Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. It's amazing how some things change and yet remain the same. What began as a wealthy patron's desire to perpetuate mountain crafts and lift up the people who made them has in just over a hundred years blossomed into one of our state's and America's most well-regarded craft stores. Here in Asheville's Grovewood Gallery, you'll find work for sale by more than 450 carefully chosen artists, including some in residence. Just as their predecessors did in these buildings beginning more than a hundred years ago. During the late 1890s, on the doorstep of a vigorous new century, Edith Vanderbilt, wife of George Washington Vanderbilt, the progressive son of New York industrialist Cornelius Vanderbilt, decided to help the youth of a village that had been established just outside the gates of their expansive Biltmore estate. The fruit of that small beginning became Biltmore Estate Industries in 1901. The business grew, including woodworking and the spinning and weaving of locally sourced wool into cloth. After the death of George Vanderbilt in 1912, architect and builder Fred Seeley purchased the business and moved it to seven English-style cottages next to his father-in-law's new Grove Park Inn giving birth to Biltmore Industries, which proved to be an extraordinarily beneficial move. Grove Park Inn, they advertised it as the finest resort hotel in the world. So he did get uh, rich and famous people to come to Asheville. I tell people anytime anybody got their picture in the paper over three times in a good light, he wanted to make sure they had homespun on. And he was very successful at doing that. Homespun was the brand name Seeley chose for his new venture, and he was a master at spreading it around. When they would come to Grove Park Inn, Fred Seeley would make sure he made, a, made their way over to his little factory here to see the cloth being made. And of course, most of those folks were fascinated by it. And when they left, he made sure they had some cloth. And then his next advertisement would be, Henry Ford wears homespun. Thomas Edison wears homespun. President whoever, Wilson, Hoover, Coolidge, Where's homespun? After Fred Seeley's death in 1942, the textile business declined. Enter the scene local automobile dealer and entrepreneur Harry Blomberg, who, according to his daughters, never turned down a good real estate deal. He was always buying. He got a good deal. Yeah, he did get a good deal, but he was always buying property. He loved property. Yeah. He always said they're not making any more land. He said God is not making any more land. Right. Right. So he bought, uh, bought property every opportunity he got. He didn't sell it, he just bought it. <laughs> Harry kept the weaving going up until 81. He ran this, these buildings as the homespun shops, which became a very popular place. An antique car museum was added in 1965. I do love this car. 53,000 miles. Oh my God. Harry Blomberg passed away in 1991, so his two daughters, Marilyn and Babs, and Marilyn's husband, Buddy Patton, were left with the businesses to, to run. So they started renovating, eventually changing the name of their business to Grovewood Gallery, and began renting spaces to artists. And it's to the, the Patton's credit that they've kept it alive in the very space that got it started in the beginning. Chris spent his early years near Asheville and remembers seeing Harry Blomberg's business in operation. And I'll never forget going into the, uh, what's now the Antique Car Museum, which was, they had 40 looms running in there at that time. And the sound of those looms going simultaneously was just incredible. Beautiful, beautiful work that they were doing. Kind of opened my eyes a little bit to hear these guys and they just sit here all day but look what they get at the end of it and what they were able to produce. Chris cares a lot about the history of 
um, Asheville in the area, and he, he saw himself fitting in here, and he definitely does. Chris creates lovely high-end wooden flutes in his Grovewood studio, instruments in demand worldwide for their dark, rich tone. He uses African blackwood and other rare woods, which he ages for 10 years. A bell flute head joints, part sterling silver, are carefully finished and voiced, assuring that each instrument has that distinctive a bell sound. This is Kate Steinbeck, Chris's wife, whom we could listen to all day, should time allow. Carl Powell makes glass art, stunningly layered stained glass windows for both residences and public buildings, and laminated glass sculptures with striking bevels and intricate engraved patterns that seem to float inside the form and change their perspective depending on the angle from which you view them. I was very, very influenced by the constructivist painters like Paul Clay, uh, Kandinsky, uh, Marc Chagall was a big influence also. Uh, in fact, when I see a Kandinsky painting, I think of stained glass, and I always have since I've been around stained glass. Carl's work is very contemporary. He's come up on his own with several techniques to create his own style. And you know Carl Powell's work when you see it. It's very distinctive. It's been a great place to, to have a studio, beautiful setting. You get to bring your dog to work every day. And of course, it's nice ne being next door to the Grove Park Inn and you get some of that traffic through here. So here I am. <laughs> we love metal smithing, but we also, we love crafting. We like to make things with our hands. And that's one thing about these buildings is they have that feeling that there's been a lot of making a lot of craft. Kathleen and Tom have to know the different properties. That, I mean, they work with silver, gold, pewter, bronze, um, copper, pearls, diamonds. They work with so many different materials and they have a very broad knowledge of everything in metals. Their work is substantial. It has a lot of design to it. The process they use to reproduce a finished piece of jewelry is fascinating and complex. First, they create a mold, then a wax model, followed by casting and finishing. And finally, they end up with a piece of art. Not every artist is a fit for Grovewood, either for studio consideration or representation in the gallery. Their work has to match the gallery's look and feel, price points, and professionalism. We only represent work from the United States, and our mission really is to show that to our visitors, to show them what artists make in this country that really is professionally done and, and um, also affordable that people can live with and enjoy. Another mission is to just make our visitors feel good when they come here, to make them welcome and feel at home here because it's a warm and, and inviting space. 26,000 visitors a year would likely agree. And we'd like to think that the many people who helped create and build what has become Grovewood Gallery over the years would as well. Were they here to see what has become of the seeds they planted? Oh, look, isn't that beautiful? Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.